the survivor car reward would soon become known as a curse. Win the car, lose the game. This mantra became well known and despite it, many players still wanted to try to win the car and win the million. This may sound like it's made up or exaggerated, but no. The survivor car curse is very real and it extends to other players you may not have even considered were cursed by a car, but they most certainly were. Today, we will be looking at every single player cursed by a car that they won and answer the real question, which is, was anyone on the path to win? And then once they won the car, their games went downhill. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing to this channel. This video was made possible by the patrons on my Patreon, and every month they vote on what videos I should make like this one. Consider joining them to get videos early and to pick what videos I make. Now on to the complete history of the car curse in Survivor. So what is a curse by definition? A curse is any expressed wish that some form of adversity or misfortune will befall or attach to one or more persons, a place, or an object. In particular, curse may refer to such a wish or pronouncement made effective by supernatural or spiritual power. Now, if we're going to take this seriously, and oh, trust me, we are. The car itself is the object, giving others misfortune, and the pure definition of the car curse is that if you win the car via winning a challenge, then you are destined to lose the game. But where did this all start, and how has the car tanked players' games? It all begins way back in Season 2, the Australian Outback. It is the Final Four, and Colby Donaldson is well on his way to winning this game. He can't be stopped in immunity challenges, and everyone seemingly loves him. Nary a person has a bad word to say about him, but that is prior to the reward challenge where Jeff reveals that for the very first time, survivors will be competing for a vehicle. The reward includes a tent, a mattress, four wheels, and a key. You're playing for a Pontiac Aztec. This is a car that converts into a tent. The back end opens up, it becomes a tent, you have a mattress inside, it's pretty cool. Now in case you were wondering, these Pontiac Aztecs stopped being made in 2006. Just want to throw that fun fact in there. Anyways, Colby wins the reward challenge like he wins pretty much everything else this season. And boy, is he excited about finally owning a new car. Heck, Jeff is so excited, he awkwardly tries to like ask to join him. It's kind of like a weird date thing. I just want a new car. I cannot believe it. I've never had a new car. I want a new damn car. I Way to go, Colby. The chariot awaits, as does a really nice hot shower and a hot meal. And we got enough grub, I'm gonna join you if that's cool. Oh. Perfect. Now when Colby actually sees the car for himself, he is way too excited. Uh, the car sucks though. Anyways, his mom shows up and they share the evening together, sleep in his tent car thing, and she watches his shower the next morning. Anyways, the curse does not hit him immediately as he does win the next two immunity challenges, putting him in a very enviable spot. It is now time for him to pick who his opponent will be in the final two. He can either pick Keith, a guy he has great disdain for and almost certainly beat no questions asked if he were to take him, or he can take the very lovable Tina, who has been the real brains of their alliance that has run the game. In fact, he's admitted that she ran their alliance. So who does he pick? The 14th person voted out of the tribe is Keith. Of course, this is a massive mistake if his goal is to win it all, but not all is lost. He can still win with a solid final tribal council performance. He didn't completely throw away the game. Keith was a guaranteed win, but here it's more like a 50-50. So a good final tribal council performance and an apology to Jerry Manthe for how he treated her pretty much could net him a win. But what does he do instead? Well, I guess we're supposed to make a spiel here about why we deserve the million dollars or why I deserve it over Tina and I don't I don't know that I do. He acts like winning doesn't matter to him and he absolutely does not apologize to Jerry. Jeff then goes to read the vote where him and Tina are tied three to three and the winner of Survivor, the Australian Outback. <laughs> Colby's game tanked right around the time he won the car. No doubt about it. Would he have made the same decision if he had not won the car? Very possible, but who really knows what happens if he doesn't win it? And then sees his mom, who probably put his head back in the real world and outside of the game he was playing. Let's move on to our next victim, Lex Vandenberg in Survivor Africa Season 3. So far during the merge, he has betrayed his main alliance once, but is still good with them, won multiple immunities, and been on two of the previous three reward challenges. Life is going well for him, as this is the final five and he is in the majority alliance. He does does end up winning the final five reward challenge and no one even knew what they were playing for yet but as it turns out some chrome. I see some chrome. Chevy Avalanche it's all yours oh <laughs> yeah 
It is a Chevy Avalanche, a vehicle that stopped being made back in 2013, but Lexus won a brand new one here, at least for the time of when this was filmed. And uh, someone is a bit jealous of Lex. When I walked around that bush and saw that big blue Chevy truck and knew it wasn't mine, I was so like jealous. So I was annoyed and a little pissed off and trying to be happy for Lex, but deep down inside, I wasn't that happy for him. It's tough, it's annoying, you know, I just, I just don't want him to win anymore. Ethan is jealous to be precise, and this is a rare negative emotion being displayed by him. So if he is saying it, then it must be a big deal. Back at camp, Tom does his typical thing of saying how others are jealous of Lex, but uh, what he really means to say is himself. Now, understanding Tom speak does take some time to get used to, so trust me on this, Tom's jealous. Today, there's a little bit of animosity towards Lex. I'm winning that truck. I had uh, a lot of people asking me about my lines and trying to change things. But Lex senses this and knows something is up, but he doesn't know or understand why. Now, what is important here is that with this car win, people realize that we need to get this guy out now. He is winning everything, and if he continues, he's gonna win the game. So T-Bird, Kim Johnson, and Tom all agree to vote out Lex at the next tribal council. Tommy, on several occasions, has tried to get Lex voted off. He actually told Teresa that Lex should be the next one to go. However, Lex wins immunity again, proving how he does seemingly win everything and therefore saves himself to the final four. Since Kim Johnson wins immunity and Tom is viewed as an even bigger endgame threat, he is voted out, so it all comes down to the final immunity challenge. Lex versus Ethan versus Kim, and based on how everything is going, Lex should not only win this, but win the game when he does. He almost certainly beats Kim in a final two and has a good shot to beat Ethan as well, but something is a miss. Ethan drops out of the challenge first, and what do we learn? My belly's gonna, you know, huh? my belly's gonna. You got the worst of it, though, right? Yeah, it's just, just drain. Lex had problems with his stomach all night last night. He was up like 10 times going to the bathroom. I'm sure he's dehydrated. Well, the sun is ridiculous right now. What are the odds that out of everyone, Lex is the one who has stomach issues and stayed up all night due to diarrhea? That means that not only is he tired, but he is dehydrated as well. As you may imagine, standing in the hot Kenyan sun has taken its toll and... Lex, you're out. He blows final immunity, a challenge he certainly would have won if not for the out of left field illness that he contracted. At tribal council, Kim votes him out and reveals afterwards that she did so because of how much he had won so far and due to his entitlement. Is the car the reason he got sick? Probably not, but the movement to get him out of the game really garnered a big push once he won it, and in the end, all that winning became his downfall. We move on to season four, Survivor Marquesas, where Sean Rector is a dead man walking, and I mention this because it's important. He needs to win out on immunity challenges, or at least get to the final three where him or Vesepia win final immunity to reach the end. Now, even if he reaches the end though, does he win the game against anyone left? Absolutely not. That ship has sailed at this point. So at the reward challenge, when Jeff reveals that whoever wins the challenge gets a new Saturn View, a vehicle that stopped being made in 2009, Sean is ecstatic when he does win the car. Car is great. If it's a new car with no car payments, I, I can't... I'm blessed, man. I can't ask for anything better. As I've mentioned before, though, car or no car, Sean is done for. He goes on to not win immunity, and the sentiment is clear at camp that Pascal and Aaliyah want nothing to do with him, and they rope Kathy in with them. Well, I believe but you know it's, what? it's cultural. That's it. It's what? I'm so cultural. naive. It runs deep. I know it does. Kathy's. No, she's from Vermont. I'm from Georgia, and Sean's from Harlem. This thing runs deeper than a game. I'm not willing to capitulate and you know, I'm gonna dig in uh, to heck with them. At Tribal Council, despite all of the pitching Sean does to sway Kathy to his side, he is voted out three to two, but remember, he stood no chance before the car and winning it did him no favors. Season five, Survivor Thailand has us once again at the final five and everyone left is the majority alliance that just got done steamrolling Sukjai. So now the pecking order in terms of how we see it is 
Ted at the bottom, then Helen, then Jan, then Clay, then Brian at the top. Ted would need to win every single individual immunity challenge left to guarantee himself a spot at the end or at least vote out Brian Heideck. So it is reward time and Jeff Probst thinks he is super cool rolling up in his Chevrolet Trailblazer, which at least this time is a vehicle that's still being made today. Hey guys. Let's go, Big Ted, take the front. Got a little heavy foot there. <laughs> This challenge has everyone collecting puzzle pieces and unscrambling them to spell out the words road trip. In a very surprising turn of events, Brian misspells this and Ted steals his answer and wins. Brian thinks he has it. What are you spelling? Road trip. That's not road trip. Road trip. Ted, yeah. win your award. Yeah, baby! That was four games. We got a trip, baby. Yeah. Now Ted not only wins, but he gets to take someone with him on the reward and he picks Helen. Their time together on the reward is hilarious, but you can already tell how fed up Helen is with Ted. Back at camp, we see clear jealousy from Brian and Clay due to Ted's win. Everyone at camp then paints him as the next target to go. I'm pissed off anytime I don't win. I don't like losing. I'm very envious of him right now. Jealousy, I guess, is I wish it was me. Ted got his truck due to me. I didn't even get a thanks should have thanked me. Ted then comes back from the reward and senses jealousy, but meh. After all, Brian's already promised him final two and Brian is running this game, so no worries. Ted doesn't win immunity like he did in the previous episode and at tribal is voted out four to one. But with Brian running the game, we all knew that he wasn't going to the end. It became very clear when Brian described who the final four were and Ted was not included. There's my three ends. One disposable, the loyal soldier, oops, and a good friend. <laughs> <laughs> Did Ted's game change with the car? Well, it certainly didn't help him staying over Helen. Had Helen gone first, Ted possibly wins out the remaining immunities and wins a final tribal. He was a legitimate threat if he actually got there. But we move on to season six, Survivor the Amazon, where the final five have a reward challenge for a spiffy Saturn Ion. These have not been in production since 2007. Anyways, Matthew Von Ertfelda wins, and uh, here's a guy that isn't as bad off as Sean Rector was, but his only chance to maybe win is against Butch in the final two, and even that isn't a guarantee. Now, Matthew has played an amazingly solid second place game where he has dominated challenges and seems to be not anyone's target, nor is he annoying anyone like a couple other people are. But his social game ain't nothing to write home about. But anyways, he wins the car. Matthew wins reward! Woo! That's your car, baby. Head on over. I really am very happy for Matthew. I'm very happy that he got to win the car. And I asked him that if he ever goes to Asia or if he ever returns to the planet that he came from, that he said I can borrow it and go out cruising for chicks. Now we never actually hear if anyone at camp is jealous since so much time is focused in this episode, rightfully so, on how their camp burnt down while they were away at the challenge. Anyways, there are bigger fish to fry because Matthew is such a non-factor in almost everyone's games. He's a goat being dragged to the end essentially. This is only proven as everyone would rather vote out Butch and Rob Sesternino than Matthew at the final four and final three. He then reaches the end and gets blown out by Jenna in a six to one vote. The winner of Survivor Amazon. The car didn't tank his game because in this case, his game really couldn't be tanked any more than it already was in terms of having a shot to win it all. Season 7 Survivor Pearl Islands is a whole different beast in a few respects. Here we are at the final five, which is completely normal. However, part of that final five is Burton and Lil, who have already been voted out of the game once and have returned back. Since returning, Burton has been on a tear that has him looking like he is on track to win at final tribal council against, frankly, anyone left in the game. He is golden, especially since his final two deal is with Fair Play, who everyone hates. The reward challenge here promises a night out in Panama and Burton pulls off the win and here's when the curse strikes and though he isn't fully aware of it yet, as he brings Fair Play along with him in a cocky move, thinking that the three women back at camp will not conspire against them, and even if they do, who cares? He just won a GMC Envoy, which is a surprise. He didn't know this was going to happen. A truck that stopped production in 2008. Are we worried about the girls strategizing against us? No, exactly. I feel like we were pretty confident in our abilities. That... Yeah, I think we can squash their plans pretty quickly. Yeah. I, I mean, not one of them has had a strategy yet in this game. Yeah. I don't know why it's starting now. Yeah, exactly. John and I were just kind of shooting the breeze, talking about 
not talking about the car when we got back to camp because it is something that someone might hold against me. But anyways, back at camp, as you may have surmised, the three women being left alone is a crucial mistake and it is all because Burton took fair play with him on the reward. His cockiness is doing him in as the three women conspire to get out Burton, but if he wins immunity, they say then it'll be fair play instead. Let's see who does immunity tomorrow, guys, because I think we need to get think about Burton first. He doesn't just this. So if Burton wins immunity, John's gone, right? Right. If one of us three win immunity, Burton's gone. But that doesn't matter because Dara does go on to win immunity, leaving both men open for elimination. And that is exactly what happens when the favorite to win it all gets cocky and blows the game as he likely wins against anyone in the final two. 12th person voted out of the tribe. Torch. Season 8 Survivor All-Stars has the castaways being able to win a GMC Chevrolet Colorado truck, a truck that is still being made to this day. Boston Rob wins this challenge like he wins pretty much everything else this season, and when Jeff offers him to take anyone he wants on this adventure in his truck, he picks his obvious choice, but Jeff is shocked. A little bit of Survivor trivia. In the first seven seasons, the person who has won the car has never won Survivor. One person coming with you. Gotta be Amber. Really? Second place and uh, been with me from day one. In what's very interesting, and I don't know if you caught this, this is the first time anyone has mentioned or acknowledged the car curse during the actual show, but it will not be the last time. Don't worry though, Jeff calls shotgun so he can sit next to his man crush while Amber sits in the back. Boston Rob drives that truck fast and hard, kind of like how he is playing this game, and Jeff praises his driving. Are we seeing some sort of reverse love triangle being set up here? Done, Mariano, what up? <laughs> This is a guy yeah. who knows his way around a truck. Anyways, in a twist that only occurs this season, the person who gets brought along on the reward also gets a car. To be fair, they didn't win it. It was simply gifted to them, but we will touch on that later. Now back at camp, Amber cannot contain her excitement and she tells everyone left that not only did Boston Rob win a truck, which they already knew about, of course, but she won a car as well, which no one needed to ever know about. And the envy is on clear display. They won a car a piece. They brought back pockets full of candy and split them up into five piles. They took their share after eating dogs and candy. I saved my candy. Well, it's easy to save your damn candy when you got a belly full and a new car. If there is a survivor hex that keeps the car winners from winning the game, I would love that. That would be my little justice. And I win the million. The curse does not take immediate effect though, and frankly, Boston Rob was already setting himself up to lose at this point, as three of the jurors already hate him. But he puts the final nail in his game, post winning the truck, of course, when he treats Tom like complete crap before voting him out, nailing that fourth juror who will not vote for him. He goes on to lose the game in a four to three shocker to Amber, and that is now the third player to go to the end of the game and lose during the final vote, but at least he gets to marry her. I love you with all my heart. The winner of Survivor All-Stars. Season 9 Survivor Vanuatu sees the car reward entering the game at the earliest it has ever been. Now at the final six, Jeff rolls up in a Pontiac G6, which has not been made since 2010 now. Anyways, the winner of the challenge gets the car and that winner ends up being Eliza. Eliza, Pontiac G6 is yours. Thank you. Like Sean and Matthew before her, Eliza is not going to win this game no matter what. She can reach the final two all she wants, but she's a goat, car or no car. All game, we have seen her be combative with people and generally disliked by almost everyone. So with that though, she does play a good enough game to survive the next two votes, but that is only because Amy and Julie are bigger threats than her and she does win an immunity challenge for herself. However, she gets blindsided by Chris at the final four in an epic fashion. The 15th person voted out of Survivor Vanuatu. Eliza, need to bring me a torch. Season 10 Survivor Palau brings out possibly the nicest car the show has ever seen and ever will see when Jeff reveals that they are all playing for a Chevy Corvette. Oh my God. All new Chevrolet 
Corvette, which of course is still being made to this day, and why shouldn't it be? It's a nice car. Now, Ian goes on to win the reward challenge, and unlike every player who has won a car so far, what happens next needs some context as this is a crucial turning point in his game. So far, he has a final three deal with Tom and Katie, but Katie betrayed him during the prior episode's reward challenge just to go on a yacht. Pretty much the only person he feels like he can trust now is Tom, but since this is the final five and there are three women left, they don't want to blow this like Burton and Fairplay did in Pearl Islands. So here's what is discussed before the reward challenge ever happens. There's a possibility that after this reward challenge, Ian and I, we're going to get separated. If one of us gets to choose one other person, we can't choose each other on this one. We've got to take one of the girls out of the mix so that they're not going to uh, be able to talk to each other. Now, with that in mind, here's what happens when Ian wins the car and is asked who he wants to bring along with him. I made a deal. If there was a car involved, that I would take Tom. Do we have another Pearl Island situation on our hands? Yes. Yes, we do. As back at camp, Katie feels scorned and she dumps all the info she can to Karen and Jen. The whole thing went down since day one, Karen. I mean, Ian and I made a promise to each other that um, we would stick together till the end. And then he took Tom. And I feel like I lost my best friend out here. Ian's game is just tanked from here until the end of the game. In a series of baffling decisions, Karen asks him if his final three is with her or Katie, and here's what he says. Is it you, me, Tom, or is it you, me, Katie? It's gonna be you, me, or you, me, and Tom. I don't know if you caught that, but uh, he was about to say Katie and he stopped himself, but Karen caught it. He then gets torn to shreds at tribal council in front of the jury. And it is clear that no matter what, Ian is going to get dragged through the mud, whether he likes it or not. And then after the whole thing with Ian taking Tom on the reward and Katie saying, well, he's made these promises to me and he's sworn his cross. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, he's promising me this and he's promising Katie this. So, this is a revelation. He does manage to not get voted out the final five, but his partner in crime, Tom, wins immunity and tells everyone he is not betraying his buddy Ian despite how good of a move that would be for his game. He says he will stay true to their final three alliance. However, Ian flubs again and reveals that he was not planning on doing the same for Tom. Well, if I would've won immunity today, it'd have been a really difficult decision for me to do Tom, so I'm glad that I didn't have to make it. If I won immunity today, that I was gonna vote you up. But I, Tom, like, okay. That's, that's all I needed to know. But Ian does get Tom and Jen's vote against him, so he has to do a fire-making duel, which he wins, and back at camp, he gets destroyed by Tom and Katie. As he continually lies and denies things, despite them both knowing better, this makes him feel like utter crap, and he says this is not how he planned on playing this game. That really sucks, because you know what? Tom's been sticking up for you this whole time. Ian's never wavered. Ian I had your back. I didn't come out here to play the villain. I didn't come out here to... Like be this, like be the the backstab ready. Like at the final three immunity challenge, he makes a shocking decision to lose on purpose to gain back Tom's respect. I'll uh, I'll go down and take Katie, and I'll give up the million um, to to get back your your guys' friendship. I'll die right now if you take Katie. Would he be accomplishing what he's trying to do? Without a doubt. Ian would have my friendship after this game anyway, but he wins my respect back. Ian likely wins against Katie at the final tribal council, but in this case, he valued the friendship and respect of Tom more than the million dollars, a very admirable trait for anyone to have. With the next season, season 11, Survivor Guatemala, as he reveals the final five are playing for a Pontiac Torrent, which has not been in production since 2009, and says that winning this can curse your game and no one in the prior seasons who has won a vehicle has ever won the game. But in 10 seasons of Survivor, the person who has won the car reward has never, ever won the game. Some people, the superstitious kind, believe it is the curse of the car. However, Cindy wins the car and is given the very rare opportunity to not accept her car and give everyone else a car instead. So, what decision does Cindy make? I think I'm gonna say, I would love to give everyone a car, but, I'm here to beat the odds, and so far I have. On its face, this seems like a terrible decision, a game-ending blunder, possibly. Well, let's look at how every player reacts and give context as to where Cindy stood before and after this decision. First, Stephanie is the player she takes with her on the reward, and Stephanie says, I would have kept the car. <laughs> 
Stephanie was just like, oh my gosh, overwhelmed with enthusiasm for me. With only five people playing the game, Cindy only needs one more person to agree with her decision. So let's check in on Rafe. I just couldn't believe that that was the decision Cindy made. For me, that didn't seem like a choice. It was like, you have to give the car to the four other people. Like there was nothing else I would have done. Like I never would have taken the car for myself. He seems more baffled than mad, but I think it is fair to say he doesn't agree with the call. Now, what does Lydia think about Cindy's decision? In my mind, I'm thinking, Cindy, keep the car. You deserve it. You want it rightfully. You know, yeah, I'm glad for it, her because she anything. needed a car. Well, all right then. We now know that the majority of who is left all agree with Cindy. Danny doesn't really matter here, especially since her personal thoughts on whether she agrees or disagrees is not shown, or maybe she doesn't make it known. So I think it could be safe to say it's neutral, but even if it was negative, three people agree with this decision. But it doesn't matter. None of this does. At the previous tribal council, we learned that Cindy and Judd were on the outs when her and Judd get blindsided and he goes home. So the entire car debacle is for not. Cindy needs to win out on immunities to possibly pull out the ultimate win, which she doesn't, and she is voted out. Season 12, Survivor Exile Island has a surprise for the winners of this reward. You see, since the show is back in Panama for this one season, I guess they thought it would be fitting to make the car a surprise again. Like like they did in season seven. So anyways, Terry and two other people win the group reward challenge and the other three people are sent back to camp slash exile island. But plot twist, the players who won reward now get to compete for a GMC Yukon, which are still being made to this day. Wins, fully loaded, 2007 GMC Yukon. Oh my. God. Terry wins the vehicle, but this shouldn't be a shock to anyone left in the game as he has won every individual immunity challenge so far and he needs to win the rest too if he wants to get to the end and win. Bruce being gone uh, out of this game was a good thing for me because I got to skip a challenge and pretty much every immunity challenge coming down the road, I've got to take. He is on the hot seat. Now to be fair, he does have the super idol that can be played after the votes are read, but it cannot be used past the final four and uh, there is a final two this season. Since everyone knows this, no one tries to bother to vote him out. Plus he wins another immunity along the way. So at the final three, it is time. If Terry wins this, he likely wins the whole game. So what happens? The first person out of this challenge. Aris is out of the challenge. Danielle wins immunity. Danielle going to the final two. He blows it hard. Now car or no car, he needed this immunity challenge win to get to the end as no one had Terry as part of their final two plans once the car reward happened anyways. But did the car curse him for winning this immunity and likely the game? Season 13 does not have a car reward challenge. We will touch on that in a bit, but season 14 Survivor Fiji is the final car reward and it is a doozy. I'm gonna make this a short story, but uh, it's a work of art. This is the final six and it is time for the car reward. Jeff reveals that everyone here is playing for a Ford Super Duty, a super expensive but very nice truck. Yao Man ends up winning the truck, and before we continue, here is some context. Starting last season, there is no more Final Two. It is now a Final Three. Dreams has publicly said during the season he doesn't own a vehicle and seems completely enamored by winning one, as I would be too. So Yao Man, knowing he has an immunity idol in his pocket, and knowing he is not the biggest threat left in the game, strikes a deal with Dreams. If he happens to win the Final Four, for immunity challenge, then Dreams agrees to give Yao Man his necklace. This is an incredible offer on its face, so Dreams accepts it. I want to see if I make a deal with the car. You're going to negotiate with I'm the car. I'm going to negotiate a deal. Happen to be one of four. If that happens, if you win the immunity for that round, you will give it to me. I promise the guy. Okay, so keeping this in mind, the deal is Dreams gets the truck no matter what. However, Yao Man is gambling on Dreams winning at the Final Four and staying true to his word, which Dreams states multiple times after this that he intends to do so. So why did Yao Man make this deal? My worry has been always when I get to the Final Four, Dreams will probably be there. And I need a way to get rid of Dreams. I was thinking when Yao Man gave me the car, what did he gain out of that? And then I thought about his strategy. If I give Yao Man immunity off my neck, I'm gone. Sneaky, sneaky, but Dreams isn't an idiot. He knows what's going on here. He figures if he can get Yao Man out before the Final Four, then he is golden. A good thought, to be fair. He gets to keep the truck, and he doesn't have to break his word. So Dreams mobilizes everyone he can, and at the Tribal Council... Yao Man is playing the hidden immunity idol. Yao Man's immune from tonight's vote. Any votes cast for Yao Man do not count. Yao Man, that vote does not count. Yao Man, 
that vote does not count. Chow man. 13th person voted out and the seventh member of our jury, Stacy. Dang, Yao Man smartly made the first ever confirmed successful idol play. Gary's in Guatemala isn't guaranteed successful, it just seems circumstantially likely. Anyways, Yao Man wins the final five immunity challenge, so he can't be blindsided there either. However, it is now time for the final four immunity challenge and it comes down to him and Dreams, a perfect scenario for Yao Man, but a nightmare for Dreams. So what happens? Yaman is in the water. Dreams has won the last individual immunity. And in doing so, you have fulfilled part of the bargain you made with Yaman. The first part was you would do your best to win. The other part was if you did win, you would give it to him. Big question is now, whether or not you'll keep your word. Going into tribal council, Dreams is conflicted. He knows keeping this idol guarantees him final three with a highly unlikely shot at winning though, or he can give it to Yao Man and purposefully get fourth place. But he wants to hold true to this deal so he can show his kid at home how to play this game with honor and how to live your life. So at tribal council, Dreams, you have the immunity necklace. It is yours to keep or to assign to anyone else you want. I'm, I'm gonna keep it. He keeps it for himself. Honestly, from the time the car challenge happens up until this moment is so beautiful as a story. Yao Man is then voted out, and if the curse is real, Dreams can't win. That's that's really what we've learned so far. So at Final Tribal Council, he is torn apart for his decision by others, but not by Yao Man. He actually absolves Dreams of his guilt. Dreams, what went down yesterday was entirely my fault. The truck was given to you in good faith. Enjoy it, do not feel guilty about having it. A very classy move, but nonetheless, Dreams loses to Earl and gets completely shut out, receiving zero votes. The winner of Survivor Fever. So that is the car curse as it is commonly looked at by the masses and frankly by Jeff Probst in season 11. There have been no more car rewards since then and honestly what a high note to leave it on. But during these first 14 seasons other people won cars as well and I wanted to test the waters to see if they were cursed as well. Starting with Richard Hatch in Borneo he is given a car as kind of an afterthought for winning the season so it is too late for him to be cursed in Borneo but he does get voted out pre-merge his next time playing and he doesn't pay his taxes on the million that he won and spends a couple of years in jail as a result. So you be the judge at the season four reunion show literally everyone wins a car Yes, it's kind of an Oprah moment, but before Oprah does it However, no one is ever asked back to play again except Boston Rob and Kathy now Kathy gets the curse by making a Terrible decision in all-stars that does her entire game in when she keeps Amber around over Jerry and Boston Rob well, we already talked about him, but uh, I think he got a double dose of the curse because in Heroes vs. Villains, he gets outed and screwed by an out of left field Tyson move. We already learned that Amber got a car for going on the reward with Boston Rob, and fair enough, she wins the season. So if anyone completely sidesteps the curse, it was her. However, the next time she plays in Winners at War, she is voted out at her first tribal council. So at the All-Stars reunion show, Chevy lets Amber picks someone else to win a car and gives her like 10 seconds to make a decision so she just gives it to Xi'an who has never been asked back to play again. The winner of season 10 also wins a Chevy SSR so Tom gets it and upon his return to play in Heroes vs Villains he is voted out in the pre-merge. Once again in season 11 the winner gets a car this time a Pontiac Torrent just like what Cindy had won earlier in the season so this time Danny gets it and in her return to playing Survivor on Winners at War she is voted out third. Season 12 gives a car to the fan favorite for that season as voted on by the fans, of course, and Sari wins it. Since the season is already over, she can't be cursed yet, but stick with me here. Upon her return in season 16, she is screwed by a surprise final two twist. In Heroes vs. Villains, she is voted out fourth. And in Game Changers, she is screwed by Advantage Geddon. Suri may be the most cursed player to ever to play this game, all due to us giving her a GMC Yukon. Season 13, Cook Islands was the only season to skip the car reward during the season. And instead, just like season 12, gives the car to the fan favorite. This season, Ozzy ekes out that win, and he returns three times to play Survivor. Are you ready? 
ready for this? He gets massively blindsided in Micronesia, gets voted out of South Pacific twice only to get to the final four and then barely lose the final immunity, which almost certainly nets him the game if he wins it and gets voted out a third time that season. And then in Game Changers, he is unceremoniously voted out ninth. What a doozy. So what do you think about the car curse? Is it real? Let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I want to give an even bigger thanks to the patrons as they made this video happen and it was made at their request. Once again, thanks for watching.